This box has been in my cupboard a long time, though this box is much older than most of the other stuff because I brought this when I was a schoolboy and it has travelled around with me. In this box, there are some souvenirs of my grandfather. The discharge is because they are tubes for electrical discharge. I'll just show you this one because it stands up. You can see it's a piece of quite ornate glassware. And if you look, there are a number of features that you can see. It has been sealed off here and here by putting a torch. So it was sealed with a vacuum or gas in it. And there's a narrow tube going inside, which goes round and round and round and so on. And then there used to be an electrode at the top. Now there's just a bit of wire and there's an electrode at the front. This is an example of what is called a Geissler tube, named after a German physicist called Geissler, who invented this in 1857. It belonged, with the other two, to my grandfather. My grandfather, who was called Joseph Polyakov, was an extraordinarily talented inventor. He had, I don't know how many patents in his lifetime, he invented the volume control, which is now on every radio. He invented the hearing loop, which helps deaf people hear in concert halls and so on, and lots of other things as well. He also invented an early form of the transistor in the 1920s. But why he had these, I don't know. I think he probably just thought they were fun. And if you look at the glass, the glass is slightly yellow because it's impregnated with some sort of iron which fluoresces when exposed to UV light. The point about these Geissler tubes is that they're filled with a low pressure of gas. Unfortunately, I don't know which sort of gas. It's definitely not neon because neon would glow red. It may be air, it could be air with a trace of mercury. But the important thing about these gases are that when you apply a high voltage, And Neil used a device called a Tesla coil, named after the famous scientist Tesla, which produces a very high voltage at a very high frequency. It's sufficiently high that it can jump across narrow gaps of insulators like air. And what is, to me, even now remarkable, is that if you apply them to these, you get a discharge you generate a plasma in the gas without having to have any electrical connection to the other electrode. Presumably, there is enough current that will leak either through the glass or to uh, through the air. The mechanism is the high voltage ionizes the gas, the ions recombine and give out energy. This makes the gas hot and it emits light, not necessarily just because it's hot, it because the electron, as it falls back to the nucleus or to the energy levels which it normally occupies, gives out light. So it's a way of generating light, right? and the particular gas will give a particular wavelength of light. I don't know what this is, maybe air even, and the reason I don't know, get a characteristic discharge from a gas, which depends on the identity of the gas and the pressure. And since we don't know the pressure and we don't know the gas, it's a bit difficult to guess. There are measurements we might be able to do, but we might damage the tubes. And anyway, we don't have the kit at the moment. This equipment must be quite old, because my grandfather, if he were still alive, would be 143 years old, and he died 55 years ago. So the very minimum is probably 70 or 80 years old, could be 100 years old. So the gas has been sealed inside the glass for that time. And the fact that they still work means they're still at low pressure and air has not gone inside the tube from outside. Everything leaks slightly, but the rate of leakage is so slow that the performance has not been affected. And I find that pretty remarkable. The other thing which you can tell is that because the glass and the liquid here glow when the discharge takes place, it means that the gas is emitting UV light. 
So presumably the tube going through here is either glass that does not absorb UV light very strongly, it could be quite thin glass, or it may even be quartz. Though if it's quartz, it's a fantastic piece of glass blowing because quartz is not an easy material to blow. I have once tried using this, I can't remember when, when we used to have Tesla coils in the lab, but I haven't used it for 20 or 30 years at the minimum. But then I thought that Neil would like to get his hands on it and I wasn't wrong. What to me is remarkable is that these pieces of equipment, which are made purely for entertainment, they have no deep scientific value and were made to entertain audiences perhaps a hundred years ago, are still working today and are still entertaining people, perhaps entertaining you, definitely entertaining me, but also pose intriguing questions what is the liquid, what is the glass made of, and so on. And of course, what immediately comes to mind is what techniques you could find to identify these things without damaging the equipment. I think that my um, grandfather would be quite amused. I knew him, though he died when I was 11, but I think he would be very amused that it was being shown to such a big audience. He couldn't possibly have imagined the number of people that would watch this video, even if it's not very successful. We're talking about thousands of people watching it. And so I think it is really quite a, a tribute to my grandfather that the items that he collected are now being shared with a big audience.